first two years, I was downhearted. I had no place to go, nothing to do. But then I gave myself a good going over. Joe Wise said, you can't sit at home and do nothing all day. You got to get up and do things. Well, the day goes by pretty quick for me now. I don't daydream or nothing. I just think of something and forget it. That daydreaming, it don't do you no good. Keep busy, keep moving. That's the trick. You wake your head, fold up the bed. You don't want to leave your couch open all day, you know? It's depressing. You cook an egg, you toast some bread. You cook for yourself, you save a bundle. If you don't look after your money, who will? You think about the day ahead. Don't go feeling sorry for yourself. It's like I said, you can sit at home and be mad at the world, or you can get out and do things. You take a walk, you meet a chum. There's this one guy, lives down by National Biscuit. Boy, you should see the nice aroma. You shoot the bowl, you argue some, and then maybe he fights over a couple other fellas and you play some poker. You lose the gin until they come. This guy remembers what cards you picked up. The dirty bum! <laughs> but even getting beat at gin certainly beats Snoop doing nothing. You take a bus, you take a train. Maybe you go and visit your wife's grave. On the way, you read the Reader's Digest. It does you good to use your brain. And then maybe go and visit your cousin. You bring a six pack. When we was young, we was always together. And raise a cane. I hope the times we had. I remember once, back in 42, we were at this dance with these girls we met. <laughs> and then this crazy wife, who you screamed or you prayed, the Big Dipper they called it. We could hardly walk as we left the car, so we staggered down for a candy bar. And then we sat and laughed at the Penny Arcade. Oh. <laughs> At six o'clock, you watch the news. Them politicians get you so mad you throw your slippers at the set. <laughs> you cook some pranks, no big to do's. Most nights you lay around and straighten up, maybe you give your daughter a call. You watch a game, you take a snooze, but then there's Sunday. Sunday's different. You change your shirt and shine your shoes because you're going around the block to the tavern. You shoot some pool, you drink some beer. You don't have to drink a lot to have a good time, maybe three, four in an evening. You find a pal, you bend his ear. You meet a lot of your old crowd there on Sunday. Sometimes a bunch of you, you sing the kind of song you never hear, like Stardust or In the Mood. Last Sunday we sang Till We Meet Again. Believe it or not, I once did a waltz to that tune. I was at a dance, I was 17, and the girl was like, from a magazine, and the lights were low, and I really mean low. <laughs> I think my buddies had something to do with that. <laughs> and I kissed her cheek as we waltzed away. I remember that, like it was yesterday. Boy, was she surprised, I can hear her say, Joe. They drive you home, around the block. You take the cash, out of your sock. <laughs> Fix the bed, you wind the clock. When I retired, a lot of people told me, Joe, you got your health? Why'd you do it? But I got no regrets. It's just not a habit, I guess. I keep busy, keep moving. I go to fires every once in a while. That big fire we had on Milwaukee Avenue about three months ago, I was there. I'm surprised you saw the smoke coming out of there heavy as hell, but you didn't see no flame. Get the news over the radio. They must have had about 30 units there. 
Boy, that was some fire.